Okay, welcome everybody. This is the uh, last leg of the developer series. We'll be discussing UX media. I am Christopher Cabono. I'm a product owner with Tritium. Uh, last name may be familiar as I've been in uh, technical support the last several years and have moved into product management. And with me today is our uh, software architect, Blake Puhak, and uh, senior developer and overall user interface extraordinaire, Logan Byam. And today we're gonna discuss UX media and uh, we bring in the developer to go a little bit more in depth about what it is past just the feature summary. And we'll kick it off with the reminder that this arrived in 4.10. In 4.10, we introduced a number of features, one of which uh, was UX media. Coming up for us soon, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we will have the 4.10 U1 update build. So for those that don't know, 4.10 is earmarked as a long-term supported release. And as such, we provide critical defects and security update backports in, in the form of a update build. So within a couple of weeks, we should have uploaded to the software uh, portal, the images for 4.10 U1, which is probably a good opportunity to remind people because the follow-up question is, well, how do I know what's been fixed? Uh, you make your way over to knowledge articles. And if, if you're not familiar with an ag community website, uh, uh, what are you waiting for? Please join, make an account, it's free. There's lots of great content on this website. Uh, one of which in particular is the knowledge articles section. All of these articles are drafted and created by either uh, uh, personnel in the technical support department, uh, developers themselves, uh, members of the product management team. These are all Tritium employees that are creating content to, to uh, uh, support the, the documents um, portal and resources. And so here in knowledge articles is where you're gonna find things like release notes, um, breaking changes for the, for the developer side. And then uh, just overall troubleshooting um, tips and frequently asked questions. You know, if you run into an exception, you can usually grab a small snippet, put it into the search, and, and if it shows up in an article, there's usually great content there to provide you uh, a, a little bit more background, not just the, you know, here's what you do to fix the problem, but a, a little bit better understanding of what's going on behind the scenes. So it's a great, great place to learn more information. And once you're logged in, you have access to uh, uh, resources. And by clicking on resources, this is the this is the sole source for documentation with Niagara. Uh, here you will find when when we've updated a document, it goes here first. So if you're worried that you may not have the latest information in the in the PDF that you have, come here and see what's up and published here. And you can always generate PDFs from here if you like to have uh, local copies, but I find it just easiest to have the search uh, when it's available. All right, so that said, while we're um, on the topic of releases, 4.11 is in early access right now. We, we are in fact, uh, about to approach the beta phase. Uh, so now we're, we are looking more for um, customers and in, in, in production that are willing to sign the agreement to you know, allow an unreleased version of the software to run on site so we can get true uh, you know, production run time. Because as we all know, on a test bed, in certain conditions, things work great. You put it in production, there's lots of opportunity for strange occurrences and it's great to catch those prior to release. But you can contact the email below uh, to, to get in on the program 
uh, even even if you just want early access and, and you don't have a beta uh, customer, potential beta customer, we can still provide it, uh, give you a chance to get a, a glimpse at the at the new features. And speaking of the new features, 4.11, uh, just a quick highlight, we've got the HTML5 wire sheet coming, uh, some web chart enhancements, uh, always with uh, critical security updates that's uh, you'll find that in every version we ever put out that is a uh, it is a core component and we take uh, cybersecurity very seriously and i think that provides us a lot of leverage in the marketplace uh, connectivity a real exciting one is the new addition of backnet secure connect now out in the field there may be limited opportunity at this moment for uh you know sites that actively are using backnet secure connect but if you have some and you really want to you know try it out in niagara please sign up for the beta program and we'd love to have you uh, in addition we have uh, new additions of archive and uh, alarm archiving providers and we will uh, we will be showcasing uh, the new 411 features in an upcoming uh, Tritium Talk scheduled events. Uh, it won't be a developer edition, but more of a you know, feature summary and overview. So that'll get you uh, an introduction to all these features and to, you know, get, get everyone's feet wet. So without further ado, let's discuss UX Media with Logan and I will kick it off to him to begin his presentation. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, can you can you see my screen, my slides? Yes, uh, yes, we sure can. All right, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, hi everybody. Uh, thanks so much for joining. My name is Logan Byam, and I'm on the UI team here at Tritium. Uh, so let's jump right in, and uh, we'll talk about UX media. Um, so UX Media is a new type of PX Media. It's in Niagara 4.10. Um, it marks a page as being natively supported in the browser using only HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Uh, it also provides a number of supporting APIs to help with development. Uh, it's different from our current uh, browser-based PX Media, which is HXPX, uh, because with HX, the whole Java widget tree is constructed in the station, then gets converted to a blob of raw HTML and sent down to the browser. Um, any updates on the page are also managed on the station. They get marshaled to JavaScript and sent down. Um, so this means that the station actually does most of the rendering work. Uh, but with UX Media, uh, that is actually built on our HTML5 widget framework, Baja UX and it uses Baja script for data bindings. So actually the browser does most of the rendering work. Um, this is where I talk about the end user experience when you are using UX media. Uh, the hope is that in most cases, the user experience will be close to identical, uh, just faster and smoother. Uh, we have covered most of the functionality of existing HXPX pages. Uh, it all just runs natively in the browser now. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how it works and uh, how it's different from HXPX. So again, the first difference is that in HXPX, most of the rendering effort actually takes place inside the station itself. So the station will spin up an instance of that PX page internally in Java uh, and then uses the HXPX APIs, which are also Java, to send HTML and JavaScript down to the browser. Uh, so with UX media, all of that takes place in the browser itself. Okay, the, the station's only rendering responsibility is to send the raw PX data down to the browser, and then the browser does the work of standing up the PX page. Second difference is that in HXPX, most user events, uh, like clicks, uh, they actually get sent up to the station for processing. Um, so when the user clicks on something, there's a network call, and again, the JSON is doing the work. Uh, in UX media, the user event handling all happens directly in the browser, which is much faster. Uh, number three, in HXPX, the data either comes direct from the station, uh, such as when a table is getting generated, or in some cases like field editors, uh, Baja script can also be used. Uh, but in UX media, Baja script, um, it's, it's driven almost exclusively by Baja script. 
Um, so this provides kind of a uniform way uh, to access data from the station. And then finally, uh, the programming experience is different because in HXPX, you're using a combination of Java and JavaScript where you're actually using Java to generate JavaScript and HTML. Um, but in UX media, this translation, it, it, it doesn't exist. You're just coding up the HTML and JavaScript as it is used by the browser. So let's take a couple of minutes and we'll talk about the motivations behind the creation of UX media. Absolute number one reason is performance. So when your JACE is hard at work, it's actually communicating with your connected devices. It's, it's turning the lights on and off. It's collecting time series data uh, and so on. Um, it's got its hands full. You, know, you don't want it to have to also do the work of rendering your UI on top of that. Okay? Especially when you have multiple users connecting to the same station at once because that's multiple PX pages for your JACE to manage. Um, that can give your JACE just an awful lot of plates to spin. Um, whereas UX media uh, takes a lot of that work and it shifts it to the browser. Uh, and that takes a big chunk of the load off your JACE. Um, it frees up your JACE to do the actual automation uh, and uh, connectivity work that it does best. Um, with better use of the browser cache, um, there's also, there's just less data for the JACE to generate, uh, less data for it to provide, fewer network calls it has to handle. Um, so the UI is just overall, it's more performant and so is the JACE itself. Uh, number two reason is uh, developer experience. Uh, Tritium provides a rich set of open source tools uh, for doing JavaScript development with Niagara. Uh, you can follow a quick test-driven development cycle which is red green refactor and that gives you a comprehensive test uh, comprehensive test suite uh, which in turn gives you a high degree of confidence uh, in the quality of your code and on top of that uh, in javascript world testing out changes is as simple as hitting refresh in your browser okay you don't have to do a complete module rebuild and station restart just to try out changes to your ui just make a change hit f5 you see what you did Number three, user experience. Um, for a, for, so for a first release, we really concentrated on just uh, providing the best support that we could uh, for the core PX functionality of things, uh, you know, buttons, labels, panes, web widgets, property sheets, scheduler, all the, the core, the basic stuff. Um, but uh, web browsers are actually evolving uh, every day in terms of features. And by focusing on a browser-based experience, uh, we get to take advantage of some of those more advanced features in our PX pages. And then uh, finally, uh, future growth. Um, so a, a Baja UI based or HX based framework, um, it ties itself to a station or to workbench, um, but a pure JavaScript frame, framework is, um, it's just more flexible and it's adaptable to future directions. So the big question on everyone's mind is, should I switch to UX media? And the answer is eh, maybe. So first, uh, let's talk compatibility. Um, so I wanna make clear that UX media is not the default PX media in 410. Okay, you need to opt in. Um, it's brand new and it's not gonna have support for every single widget type under the sun. Um, got most types, um, but not 100%. So it's not gonna be compatible with every single PX page. Um, we do hope to get widget support complete enough to make it the default in a future release, uh, but we're not gonna do that until it's safe to do so. Um, in the documentation, you can see a list of exactly which widgets are supported in UX media. Um, but for now, you can try audition mode, which we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and you can see how well it works for your existing graphics. Next, we'll need to think about performance. Um, again, the performance question. Uh, one very important aspect of this is the performance capabilities of your user's devices relative to the station. Because again, we're shifting that rendering burden um, from the JACE or the, the supervisor to your user's devices. So this will mean having just a little bit of understanding about your customers and kind of what devices they use. 
Um, so if your users are mostly using desktops or the latest iPhones and they're talking to a Jace that's under heavy load, then they're going to see a real significant performance boost because the rendering burden is shifting from the device that has less spare capacity to a much more powerful device that's the user's browser. Um, the user's browser is just generally better at rendering HTML. Um, so it takes that work away from the JS, frees the JS up to do uh, other stuff. Um, conversely, um, if your user is using you know, a, a $20 burner phone from Walgreens and they're connecting to a supervisor that's running on a strong PC, then they won't see as much of a boost. Um, another aspect that affects performance is how much of your page is widgets versus how much of it is bindings. So we need to remember that it's only the rendering work that gets shifted to the user's device. Um, because the station has the data, the act of retrieving that data, it still requires the station to do work. So for example, if your page has a table and it's populated by a BQL query that takes 15 seconds to execute, that still has to run on the station and it's still gonna take 15 seconds, okay? UX media doesn't make BQL faster. Um, but if your page has a ton of like labels and lines and polygons, you know, just like UI stuff, and if it's light on the binding side, you know, it has to just resolve a handful of words and they're all simple stuff like just strings and numbers, um, then that page should be screaming fast with UX media because the rendering work is the majority of the work the browser takes over, everything speeds up. Um, so just to wrap up the performance thing, um, our expectation is that migrating from HX media to UX media will be a lot faster in a lot of situations. Okay, we've gotten some really good feedback from early access, some really nice performance numbers. Um, it won't be faster in every single situation, but on a reasonably capable device, performance really should never be significantly worse. Okay, so if you try out UX media on a particular, fade, a particular page and find that it's slower than it was before, then please get in touch because we want to address that. All right, so you've made the decision to switch. So how do you do it? Well, it's easy. You just change the target media on your page uh, you can do that from Workbench. Um, you can do that from the browser. You just change it from HX PX Media or Workbench PX Media to UX Media, and you're done. Okay? If you do it from the PX Editor, then you will get validation warnings at the time if your page is not compatible with UX Media. Um, there are two additional tools that we uh, provide to help you with this. So the first is the media settings command, and that's accessible through the browser. Uh, if you use the HTML5 HX profile, it appears in the toolbar just when you log in as a user um, with permission to use it. Um, this lets you do several things. Uh, you can change the media type of the page that you're looking at. Um, and it doesn't have to be from HX to UX media. It could be from any media to any other media type. Um, you can also preview that page in UX media uh, right there in the browser. So if you preview it, you like what you see, you just save it and you're done. Okay. Um, third option here is audition mode. And with this, you can just kind of skip from one PX page right to the next. So the process looks like, does this one look good in UX media? Cool. Save it. Send me to the next one. Does this one look good? Cool save it, send me to the next one. Uh, oh, this one has validation warnings when I view it, so it's not compatible yet. Make a note, don't save it, send me to the next one. So this is kind of a, a hands-on method of validating how pages work in UX media. Um, you are watching the process of migration to UX media as it's happening, and you have control over the entire process. Second tool is a little more automated. Uh, it's a little more hands-off. There is a media migrator tool that is in the PX editor palette. And the use case for this is say you've got 20 identical stations. You, know, you went through the manual verification process on station number one, everything looks good. You don't want to have to go through that entire manual process on all 20 of your stations. You don't want to do it 19 more times. So this is just an automated way of converting all or some of your PX pages 
to UX media. Um, you could also use it to convert back to HXPX media uh, if you needed to. Um, so you can point this at a root component if you want to convert PX views. You can point it at a folder to convert PX files directly. Um, you can filter on exactly which PX pages that you want to convert based on a uh, regular expression. A um, bunch of different options that you can use to configure exactly how you want to migrate. Um, so that's there. It's uh, Please just check out the documentation for more information on exactly how to do that. And I'll have notes on documentation at the end. Um, just to talk a little bit more about these supporting APIs, um, I won't go into a huge amount of detail on each one of these, but these are kind of the relevant APIs for um, if you want to start developing your own UX media widgets. Um, Baja Script and Baja UX are kind of the old hat ones. They've been around since 4.0. Uh, Baja Script is what you'll use to communicate back and forth with the station, and it's what you'll use to uh, populate binding data. Uh, Baja UX is, again, the core de widget development framework that uh, Niagara uses. Uh, we use that to create widgets with HTML and JavaScript. Um, BI JavaScript widget is actually new in 4.10. Um, this is an interface that marks a uh, Baja UX widget, you know, an HTML5 widget. Um, it marks it as a direct analog of a Baja UI widget, you know, a Java-based widget. Um, so if you're creating a uh, Baja UX widget just to sort of slot in place of a Baja UI widget, um, this is how you mark it as such. Like, for example, we created a label.js and we used BI uh, JavaScript widget to mark it as a direct analog of blabel.java. Okay. Um, binding and converter, again, these are more or less direct um, JavaScript analogs of their Java counterparts. Uh, bindings define how Niagara data from the station gets used to uh, change and kind of animate the widgets on your PX page. And converters define how that Niagara data gets converted uh, to values that the widget can use. So this is uh, just a long-standing Niagara API that's just been brought to the browser. Um, we have already provided implementations of the most commonly used bindings uh, and converters um, out of the box. You can do um, value binding, DBB view binding, you know, all that, that common stuff um, that's already provided for you. Um, but if you have custom bindings or converters, then you can certainly use these APIs to um, implement them for UX media. And uh, finally then, UX model, um, this is a JavaScript API uh, and it defines the structure and properties uh, of a widget on a PX page. So for instance, if you put a label on a PX page and you give it the text of hello world and the background color of red, then your JavaScript implementation of that widget will then receive that information as a UX model. That's how it gets conveyed to your JavaScript widget so that you can apply that text and that color um, to the HTML. And again, there's documentation on all this stuff in Workbench help. Um, quick note about Spandrel. This is a new API that's uh, really, it's intended to ease the construction of Baja UX widgets, because um, most of them, most Baja UX widgets wind up being composed of HTML elements and then child widgets. Um, this is an API that allows for a much more uh, declarative approach to building widgets. Um, there is much less need to kind of manually build up HTML structures, much less need to manually instantiate uh, your child widgets. Um, it handles uh, the life cycle of all that stuff for you, um, especially with JSX support. Um, you can, rather than define your HTML as strings, uh, you can just provide um, can have your widget just return um, a structure of HTML tags and child widgets um, in the form of JSX. Um, again, please note JSX is not React. Okay, this is all still Baja UX. Um, it's all still the, the native um, Niagara APIs. It's just a much easier way of writing those Baja UX widgets. Um, all of these APIs are development status. Uh, since they're brand new, um, they're subject to change, but we have built quite a lot of UI around them so far, and they're working out. 
So uh, hope you'll give them a try. And then just to wrap up, just some notes on where you can find documentation on all this stuff. Um, I'm, this is a relative to Workbench help. I'm sure you can find it um, on Niagara community as well. Um, but in Workbench help, it's all under doc developer, developer guide, user interface. Um, there is documentation on everything you need to know about UX media, uh, including how to do the migration. Um, there's full documentation on Baja UX, and that includes uh, how to use Spandrel if you choose, um, docs on Baja scripts. And um, if, you, if you're just getting started, um, if you look in the doc developer palette in Workbench um, or in the browser, um, there are some interactive Baja script and Baja UX examples um, to add to your station and play around with. And that's all I got. Um, thanks so much, uh, Chris. I'll hand it back over to you. Yeah, it's a great job, Logan. Um, I know from tech tech support days, uh, we would get calls that there'd be a Jace out there with, you know, you had four MSTP trunks and two Modbus TCP networks, and they're trending every point. And it's doing alarming, and it's serving up graphics to 10 different end users at once. And that poor little embedded device just never stood a chance. But creating this opportunity to, to take the, the load of when folks are trying to get the user interface out of a, an embedded device and, and putting the burden on the client side really you know, makes that a possibility now. Now, it, just as Logan stated, uh, maybe very clear, there's there's no complete answer as to, oh, will this now be able to do, you know, X amount? It, it just truly depends on what you guys as the customers have created. Uh, we, we always make this, this framework with the intent of people to get creative and, and make things. And a lot of times, you, you come back with things we never even thought of, which we love to see. But if, if you have something and it's maybe it's not performing as, as expected, you reach out to your support channel and we absolutely want to take those in to, to learn from it and continue to harden this feature. But I think it's a very important feature as it's, a, it's the natural evolution of, of user interface and technology to begin with. And it's just a great addition to Niagara. Um, and with that said, we're going to go ahead and uh, just wrap this up with a little highlight of, of some resources that we have for the customers. There's always the Trading University website. Um, and, you know, this is kind of a, a developer talk, so a lot of folks may uh, have already seen this, or or maybe you know they're they're, le they're more on the development side, less on the install side. But regardless of where what role you play or your level of experience, you, you may find something on here. Uh, that's just a great way to get started with a new topic. Um, you may have coworkers that suddenly they have to bid a job where it's working with a driver that they never worked with before. And there may just be a free tutorial video just as a great place to get started. So I really encourage people to browse Trading University and uh, you know, keep in touch with the content that gets created there. Where can you find more Tritium talks? So we've We've made these videos, this video included. Um, you know, it's it's easy to watch it once, and then the next time you're gonna you, you're actually gonna be out there on the job, and you need to remember it. It's gonna be weeks from now, and so you say, oh, I gotta go back and rewatch that video. Um, you can you go right to tritium.com, and uh, we've got a great great new website and layout that I, I absolutely love. But if we run over to services and supports, go to events, you can always see upcoming events, but more importantly, if you check for past events, you'll get the long list of all these videos and great content that we've made. Um, one of which is, uh, is, is sort of the feature review when we first introduced it. So if, if maybe you've watched this and realize, ooh, I, I guess like maybe I needed to get that first introduction, you can come right back here, watch that first intro, and then you'll be able to watch this video uh, as we upload it.
And another great location for content, if you don't already know, we have a YouTube channel. There's two familiar faces. Uh, they're part of the sales engineering team and they make wonderful videos uh, and, and outside of documentation as well. Um, they really just uh, goes into more of a deep dive of a particular topic. So absolutely encourage folks to um, you know, get involved, uh, enjoy and, and um, become ingrained with the framework and, and really uh, provide us the feedback with the content we provide. It, if, if something isn't as useful, let us know. And, and you go onto Niagara community, we are constantly browsing those forums for feedback and input, and, and we, we will gladly make changes to meet the customer needs. And to finish this off, we'll have a Q&A session. Uh, I believe uh, Blake is gonna help with a little moderation here. And uh, Logan and I will do our best to answer any questions that we can. Yeah, thank you, Chris and Logan. Great presentation. We've had some really interesting questions come in online. Um, so I'd like to start off with um, going back to the performance. Uh, I know your team has done a lot of testing on an array of mobile devices with this. Could you speak uh, to that a little bit about what types of devices you've been testing with and what kind of performance gains you've seen? Yeah, you bet. Um... So on, on a relatively recent device, and I don't mean like in the past three weeks, I mean in the past three years, you know, we've tried it on, um, you know, iPads, Android tablets, Android phones, iPhones, um, runs just fine. Um, I think the, the uh, question also asked about an industrial touch panel. Um, I can't answer that without knowing what the specs of it are. Um, I, I presume that, you know, it's a, if a PC running Windows, well, is it a Pentium 350 from 1997? You know, it's probably not going to do very well, but if it's, if it's reasonably you know, capable, was made in the last few years, um, then it, it should be just fine. Um, on the, the tablet side, you know, I, um, I have a, a tablet that is, you know, at least 10 years old, it's running like uh, Android honeycomb or something like that. Tried it with the embedded browser. That tablet just said, I'm sorry, I'm going to go lay down. Um, but if it's, again, just reasonably recent, not necessarily top of the line, but um, reasonably recent, reasonably uh, powerful, then it should be able to handle it just fine. Great. So if we had two really um compatible machines, one running the Niagara station on the server and one running our uh, client browser, would we expect to see significant performance gains? Mm -hmm. um, would it depend on the page layout? It, it would probably depend on the page layout. Um, if your supervisor is already running on a, a top of the line machine, then it's probably perfectly capable of handling HXPX just on its own. Um, what would, in in the case where both devices, both the client and the server are pretty fast, then I would expect to see the difference be um, in the network traffic. Um, as the, uh, if you switch over to UX media, then I would expect the amount of network traffic to actually go down significantly because the, the updates to the page are handled totally in browser. Whereas with HXPX, it has to send down all these big blobs of HTML and JavaScript because um, the page is rendered on the server and then updates are sent down to the client. Um, so with UX media, the only data that has to come down is the actual Niagara data, the Baja script data, you know, the point values as they change. Um, and then it's, it's, just a question of, are you under um, under network traffic constraints? Um, because then I would expect UX Media to ease those network traffic, uh, ease that network traffic a little bit. Okay, so if they're already happy with their performance. Um, there's probably not a huge need to move towards UX Media right away. Did no, you say that fair assessment? I would say that's fair. I would say there's there's no urgency to switch. If, if, uh, if your UI is currently meeting your needs, then uh, stick with it. And um, so we have Niagara 4.11 coming out um, later this year, and there'll obviously be some UX media improvements there. Um, I don't want to 
you know, spill all the beans about Niagara for 11 just yet, but um, is there anything exciting that people would be looking forward to? In 4.11? In 4.11. Um, yeah, I, um, for 4.11, I would say the, the, uh, the big thing, as uh, Chris mentioned, would be the HTML5 wire sheet, which will uh, have its initial release in 4.11. Okay. And if they do do anything in UX media with 4.10, they won't have to redo it for 4.11. No, no, not at all. Um, for UX media in 4.11, um, aside from you know a couple um, minor enhancements and fixes, is uh, it functionally equivalent to 4.10. Great. i uh, got a couple of questions about some of the features we support. Um, so for all of our current PX canvases, are they available in UX media? Uh, yes, uh, Canvas Pane is uh, fully supported. Um, other panes that we have support for are, uh, let's see, Border Pane, Constrained Pane, Edge Pane, uh, Expandable Pane, Grid Pane, and uh, Responsive Pane, Scroll Pane, and Tabbed Pane. And all the scaling in those panes works as they would expect. Yes, scaling is supported. Um, perhaps slightly unrelated to UX media, but perhaps not, um, but certainly performance related. Uh, when using Kit N4 SVG graphics, um, should they use the module ORD or the file ORD? Um, I would have to say that sort of depends on your use case. Um, when you're putting a PX page together, uh, the PX editor is automatically going to um, copy those files into the station file space. Um, and the, you know, the intention behind that is to, you know, only copy those images that you actually use on your JS, um, because the kit PX uh, N4 SVG module is um, so big. Um, but if you have the space to copy the entire module onto your JSON, and um, and if that's not a problem for you, you you can certainly use the module ORD. Um, Performance-wise, I think they should be functionally equivalent. It's just a question of um, how much space you want to use up um, on your station. Um, awesome. There is a, I can't remember the system property off the top of my head, but there is, a, if you look in system.properties, there's a system property that you can configure um, that defines uh, what the cutoff is for the amount of space um, when it comes to the PX editor making the decision to copy the file or not, if that helps. I sure hope it does. Um, so. Um, also related to documentation, uh, we do have examples of these APIs in our developer documentation. Mm -hmm. um, have, I, should, I should probably know this one, but have we made any recent updates in our developer documentation pertaining to test-driven development? Um, I'm not aware of any major updates. Um, there is a, a pretty significant amount of documentation in there for it. Um, which is uh, under doc developer, and I'll have to kind of remember this off the top of my head. Uh, doc developer build um, or building tools, and then it's called uh, building JavaScript applications, I think. Um, but it's under it's under the the same section of uh, doc developer that that talks about um, compiling and building with Gradle. Um, there's a there's a big chunk of documentation on how to set up uh, our TDD tools like uh, Grunt Grunt Niagara and Grunt init Niagara, and um, so yeah, uh, that's that's in the documentation. If you have any questions about it, feel free to um, post them up. And two more um, slightly more specific uh, performance questions, and you may not know the answers to these off the top of your head, and that's quite all right. Um, but uh, one of these slower pages with uh, PX is when you have a tabbed pane with multiple tabs and schedulers in each of those tabs. Um, have you had a chance to test out that specific example and see, observe any performance changes? Um, I have not tested that uh, personally specifically. Um, I would, uh, I, I, I can't make a promise, but it 
I would imagine that would actually be, um, you would see an improvement there um, because um, with both with uh, tabbed pain and with the, um, the AX scheduler, um, those laying those out on the JACE um, is, uh, you know, a, a significant chunk of uh, rendering work, I would think. Um, whereas if you let the if you let the browser handle all that layout, um, I think that that actually sounds like a pretty good use case for the rendering effort is currently on the JSON. We want to move it to the uh, to the station. Um, but yeah, certainly give it a try and um, let us know how it goes. And again, if it's um, if it's a significant uh, decline in performance, then absolutely raise that up because we don't want that um, at all. And for history views, that's uh, going to be largely dependent on the data being provided to them and the amount of data. Obviously, if you're charting 20 points, it's going to be different performance than charting just one point. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess one last question I have here is, uh, how, how is UX media different than caching? Um, it, it the, the UX media and caching are actually, um, I think, closely related. Um, so HXPX really has a difficult time uh, with caching stuff, um, it, at least in terms of the browser cache. It does try and cache things um, in memory station side. But in terms of downloading things to the browser, it has trouble with that because remember, all these HXPX pages, they get dynamically generated at the time you request them. Um, so you would not want your browser to just pull your HXPX page um, out of the cache because it would be it would be old data. Um, but uh, just get a little bit down into the weeds with UX media. Um, the way it works is when you load up a UX media page, it actually requests the the raw PX data uh, from the station. Like it's it's like it doesn't exactly download the .px file, but it's pretty close. Um, and since the the .px file itself um, hasn't changed, that .px data actually does get cached by the browser. Um, so as you're navigating around, if you come back to a .px page that you have visited before, um, it does not have to make a network call to uh, to retrieve that .px data. It's it's already there in the browser cache, and the only thing um, that gets uh, pulled down from the station at that time is the current. Um, like the binding data, the current point values, and that sort of thing. Great. Thank you so much for this presentation, Logan. And thank you, everyone, for attending today. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this uh, series from our Tritium developers here. And if you'd like to um, hear more of these in the future, please let us know. We'd be happy to do another series at a later date. Thank you so much, Blake. And thank you, Chris. Thank you both. Everybody have a great rest of the day or, or evening, depending on where you are in the world. Yeah.